um, if you recall um, in the in Vepro model there is actually a two-stage calculation process the first stage um, you calculate the efficiency score and then in the second stage you fix the efficiency score try to see um, if you can maximize the, the sum of the slacks in the sense that you try to see if there are any uh, slacks that are not zero however if you look at the multiplier model so far um, we only uh, calculate the efficiency score okay so how do you know um, if you have a situation uh, that is efficient or weakly efficient in a sense how do you know that Okay, you have an efficiency score of one, but at the same time there is no slacks because in the in the multiply model um, there is no such thing as a a, a slack um, in that model. So uh, what we need to do is actually to control um, the weights or the multiplies in in the multiply model because if you recall in the multiply model that the Restriction on the weights are basically said these are weights or multipliers are uh, non zero in a sense. You know, in, in some cases, you can actually have a, a, a zero weights for um, some of the um, the weights or the, uh, the multipliers. So, let's take a look at this, uh, the, the, these two uh, equivalent models. Uh, so, the left one is the input oriented. Uh, CRS environment model. Now the model is presented in a way that you see a uh, epsilon, which is a very very small number. Now uh, this is just a presentation. When you see a model uh, is presented like this, you immediately know that this is actually um, a two-stage calculation. So the first stage you calculate the efficiency, and then the second stage you fix the efficiency that you calculated and then you try to maximize the sum of all the slacks. You should never, never solve this model in a single linear problem by selecting a very small uh, number in here. Um, that's not the correct way to do it. The only correct way to do it is to solve this model in a two-stage process. Now, the right-hand side, this is the the dual model. Now, uh, this is a multiply model. Obviously, that's a CRS multiply model. Um, I, you know, here I presented it in a, in a slightly different way. As you can see here, originally what you have here is uh, less than or equal to. Uh, instead, I'm introducing another set of slacks, TJ. Okay, uh, so make the left hand side is equal to uh, zero. And then here, because you see, instead of having a zero in here, I have a small uh, very very small number called epsilon in there. So um, this model uh, is a little bit different. Now originally, uh, because you have a condition that says the mu view uh, are, n uh, are greater than or equal to zero, so when you solve the multiply model, if you look at your results, you will notice that sometimes you see um, zeros or some of the inputs and outputs, and that may cause an issue that. In the invariant model, uh, you will have uh, slacks. So even let's say the efficiency score in the multiplier model is one, but with some zero uh, values on the multipliers, uh, that that may be a case of weakly efficient. M by restricting that all the multipliers has to be positive, uh, basically you're saying that in order for a DMU to be efficient, having efficiency score of one, all the multipliers or the weights. Uh, have to be one. 